Support Name Explain on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. Animals can be named in a huge variety of ways, but one of the more commonplace ways in which they get named is being named after other animals. Sometimes it's pretty darn obvious to spot one animal in another animal's name. I'm looking at you, horsefly, spider monkey, and lionfish. Sometimes, however, we have to dig a little deeper into an animal's name to find another animal lurking within. What's also interesting is what kind of animals some other animals are named after. The aforementioned lionfish and spider monkey are named after those other animals because of how they look and how they move. Other times the link between an animal and its namesake animal is a little more tenuous. So today we are going to be diving into the animal kingdom and looking into a handful of animals that are named after other animals, specifically ones you may not have realized at first. And if any of these etymologies sound familiar to you, that's because this video is made up of extracts from my book, the original names, words and everything in between, specifically the animal chapter of my book unsurprisingly. Can you believe it's almost been three years since this this book came out. That's been so much time that many of you watching might not even know it exists, so if you are not aware of its existence then please go check it out for yourself. The book does very much what I do here on the channel, explain how things get their name in a fun and engaging way. It's broken down into chapters which are made up of small easy to digest entries which you can read at your own leisure. It's a fun little book and I have such fond memories of writing it after all these years. You can buy it in most places books are available and there'll be a link down below. Though if you are still not sure then hopefully this small extract of the over 100 names covered in the book will convince you otherwise. Anyway, on with the animals named after animals. Have you ever taken a moment to look at a hippo, swimming gracefully not just through the waters, but even diving underneath too and thought to yourself, how on earth is that happening? We're so used to the image of hippopotamuses swimming in water that I guess we've become somewhat numb to the fact to see these bulbous beasts acting like synchronized swimmers. There are many other animals that hippopotamuses look somewhat like, cows, pigs and rhinoceroses even. All of these are stout, robust, four-legged mammals. What hippopotamuses definitely don't look like, however, are horses. Horses are slender with much longer legs. It would be ridiculous to name hippopotamuses after horses, except, you know, they did. The name hippopotamus comes to us from the ancient Greeks. They gave us the name of a lot of animals, so you may see them pop up a few more times. Their name comes from a combination of the Greek hippos meaning horse and potamus meaning river. So yes, to the Greeks the hippopotamus was the river horse. The bandicoot is a species of animal that became known throughout the world thanks to one fruit-loving, crate-smashing, gem-collecting video game icon. Yet while that certain bandicoot was bright orange and stood on hind legs, a normal bandicoot scurries on four, grows only to around 30 inches in length, and a more a sandy brown colour than a bright orange. While bandicoots are native to Australia, they actually named after a type of rat found in India. The Indian rat is called a bandicotta, known also as a bandicoot rat. The name of bandicotta slash bandicoot Bandicoot rat is believed to come from the Telugu language, name Pandikoku, meaning pig rat, as the bandicoot rat looks somewhat more pig-like than the usual rat. When explorers discovered the Australian bandicoot, it reminded them a lot of the bandicoot rat they had seen in India, so they named this marsupial after the Indian rat. One thing that I could not mention is when remains of an extinct species of bandicoot were discovered in Australia, the genus was called Crash, and the species was of course bandicoot. Yep, once upon a time, there was a creature on our planet that has now been called Crash Bandicoot. These poor little guys have earned themselves a place in history and language thanks to the term canary in a coal mine, which means you aren't in the best of scenarios. This phrase comes from the fact that miners would take caged canaries down into the mines with them. These little birds were there to judge the air in the mines. If the canary died, this would mean the mine was full of carbon monoxide, giving the miners time to escape. While any death sucks, these guys were sacrificed to save the lives of countless miners. But anyway, their name. I'm sure you guys have heard of the Canary Islands of the coast of Africa. The ancestors of the bird we keep as pets came from these islands, so the birds were named after the islands. The name of these islands, however, in Latin is Canaria Insula, which means island of dogs, from the Latin word canis, dog, which is also where we got the modern word canine from. The islands were named after this as one of the islands had a huge dog population, so the bird is named after the islands and the islands are named after dogs. 
Comedians are known for many things. Their long tongue that pops out in an instant to catch flies, their unique eyes that allow each one to look in any direction, and perhaps most famously, their ability to change the colour of their scales. With all these unique features going for them, you'd think any one of them would be something to be named after. However, as it is with these things, they weren't named after any of these features. So what were they named after? A different animal completely. I'm sure you can see the latter half of the name, Leon, and this comes from the Greek word for lion, Leon. The first half of the name comes from the Greek kamai, which means on the ground. So the lizard's name more or less translates to ground lion. Why these guys got dubbed ground lions isn't known to us. Surely a normal lion is a ground lion, right? I haven't seen many in the sky or sea recently. The best guess is that someone thought the crested heads of the comedians looked like a lion's mane, so it got named in honor of the big cat, a rather odd name for a rather odd animal. It's hard to believe sometimes that these things are even bugs. They have fangs, they're covered in hair, and some of them even feed on birds and small mammals. You could say they are somewhat wolf-like, and wolves even play a part in how these creatures got their name. The first known spider to be donned with the name tarantula isn't technically a tarantula. It was named first to a spider found in a town in the south of Italy, this town being called Taranto. The people of this town named the spider after their town, calling them Tarantola, which turned into tarantula in the English-speaking world. Like I said, these guys aren't technically tarantulas, but they still bear that name nowadays, being called Lycosa tarantula, but more commonly known as European wolf spiders, as they are seriously wolf-like in appearance. Though this Lycos tarantula caused quite an uproar when it was first discovered in Italy, people were scared that when they were bit, they would contract an illness they called it tarantism, that would result in his hysteria, then death. It was believed that the only way to be cured of this illness was to take part in an uncontrollable frenzied-like dance that they called the tarantella. Of course, we now know that the bite from these guys are more or less ineffective to humans, but if you ever get bit by one, still feel free to dance. The name of tarantula became associated with the tarantula of today when Europeans started settling in Central and South America. While it was mainly the Spanish who were the first to settle the Americas, there would have been Italians on board their ships too. When these Italians Italians saw the monstrous spiders that lived in the Americas, they named them after the monstrous spiders they had back in Italy, tarantulas. Perhaps one of the stranger creatures that live in our sea floors and go on our dinner plates. They are a type of crustacean, and many scientists believe that lobsters are actually biologically immortal, with their only way of dying is to be killed by other animals, us pushing them in boiling pots of water included. With their eyes and stalks and their scuttling legs, lobsters are like underwater bugs. It would seem the Romans thought they were rather bug-like when naming them too. In Latin, these guys were called locusta, but we don't know where this name came from originally. Of course, that doesn't mean we are done with this creature, it'd be pretty boring otherwise. What's so interesting about this name is that another creature on this planet had the exact same name as the lobsters in Roman times, the locust. Yes, Romans called locust locusta too, and their modern name is much more like their Latin name when compared to lobsters. Lobsters and locusts are rather similar I suppose. Thankfully however lobsters can't fly or cause havoc and swarm plagues in Egypt. What is also of interest is that despite the Latin locusta looking more like the name locust, it was actually a name first given to lobsters, so locusts are more the lobsters of the land than lobsters being the locusts of the sea. And there you have it, that's a selection of animals that are named after other animals, though I must admit some of them were a tad of a stretch. That however is just 6 of the many entries that are within the pages of my book, the original names, words and everything in between. So if this video, plus the many other animated extracts I've done of this book, have whet your appetite then why not grab a copy for yourself? It's available for most good booksellers and it's available in most major formats, including audiobook where it's read by someone who actually knows how to say words. There will be a link for all those things down below. But Patrick, I hear some of you say, I've already purchased and read this book countless times. Well, for those of you out there who have already enjoyed this book, stay tuned. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and it gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. 
Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and also join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain, both of which will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.